Hello, my name is Conrad Bailey, Applications Engineer at REM Sales. Today, we're going to be looking at the cage-driven guide bushing. The parts of the cage-driven guide bushing that we have in front of us are going to be the replacement plate, the guide bushing, the actual guide bushing housing itself, the replacement cap for the main spindle, and the unit that goes in between the main spindle and the guide bushing. Finally, at the very end, you will have the housing to put on top of it to obstruct anyone from putting their finger in or causing any kind of damage. We will begin by putting the guide bushing inside of the unit, making sure that we lined it up in the keyway inside the orifice. The guide bushing will be tabbed, and it will lock right in place. On the back of the guide bushing housing, you will see that there are a set of screws. The two that are farthest away from the flange are going to be the retaining screws for this unit. The four that are closer to the face of the flange are going to be what holds in the entire unit into the sleeve itself. For that, we're going to use a Allen key, loosen the four bolts just enough so that there's movement inside of the sleeve. Now that we have those loosened, it's going to make this a lot easier to set it initially. What I can do is simply put my 20 millimeter two pin spanner inside of the back and essentially just thread it on. You, could, you will be able to do this inside the machine easily as well. The reason to do this before putting the other units on is, you will see that inside of there you only have a window to make fine tooth adjustments. This will make your entire setup a lot quicker and less painful. We are now going to take this You'll see that on this unit, there are two tabs right along this, the inside of the unit. On the external portion, you will have two tabs here as well that line up. We are going to keep that in mind as we put this unit together. This is gonna replace the spindle cap you have going on the main spindle right now. It's going to go right in here, and you'll see that it is slotted. It is slotted so that way you can adjust it and have a little bit more control once you get it onside the main spindle. I'm not going to fully lock it in place yet. Now that I have this right here, make sure that you Put this on when, this, uh, when the unit is already in place. You do not want to drive in with the Z-axis. Instead, you want to physically put this on yourself, not to damage the tabs or the slots inside of it. Now that we have this, we can thread this on to the actual main spindle, and we are all situated with the physical portion of the setup. Lock in our adjustment screws. Attach our airlines, and we are all set. And now we are going to go into the control side and show you the parameters and relays you have to change for this to be functional. We are going to start off by hitting the custom graph screen. This menu should pop up. If you get this menu, just hit it one more time until you are on the main screen. You'll see a bunch of options here available ready for you. We're going to start with one operator panel. So I'm going to go by soft key, hit operator panel, and it's going to show a bunch of options here that are going to be correlated directly into whether you have chucker, swiss, or a cage driven guide bushing. As you can see here, we have rotary on and direct rotary guide bushing on. 
that's going to tell me we are in an electronically driven guide bushing. In order to go into the cage driven guide bushing, we have to go down to the direct rotary drag bushing and we simply turn it off. At that point, the only options you will have turned on is going to be rotary guide bushing. Um, you are going to see that this is going to minimize the stroke and accommodate the unit to the 80 millimeters that it has readily available to itself. If you want to move back farther, always be, feel free to go into chuck change. When you go into chuck change, you'll see that the start button is going to flash and it's not going to allow for anybody to hit cycle start. Whenever you are completely done and you have installed the unit, you can finally move everything back to the proper unit, rotary guide. I always say, before you unplug anything, if you have an electronically driven guide pushing, always make sure you A, turn this off, cycle power off the entire machine, including the main switch, and then remove any electronic components prior to installing the cage driven guide pushing. That's going to allow for a little bit more safety, as well as you avoid alarms that have to be implemented every single time. If you are going from guide bushing less, you will see that it would look something like this. You're gonna get an over travel alarm for the fact that I have changed the parameters of how much stroke I've given it, and I am in guide bushing less, AKA Chuck. Similar to what we talked about with the electronic guide bushing, we are going to A, put on Chuck change mode, power off the machine, install the unit, then we're going to come back in here, and once everything is all set, we can go to turn this off, put our rotary on, and we are back into cage-driven guide bushing mode with the 80 millimeters of stroke that we needed, and you are ready to go. Thank you for your interest in Sugami. For any further questions, feel free to contact your distributors or visit our website at www.remsales.com.